Most of the five, White House Press Secretary under President Bush, Dana Perino, Carl Higby, who's a former Navy SEAL who served two tours in Iraq, and John Soltz, who's an Army veteran who also served two tours in Iraq and is chairman of the group VoteVets.org, which led a demonstration outside of Trump Tower today. Great to see you all. Thank Let's you. start with the military vets on this. Um, it, it's just, I mean, Trump is on record in 2003 as saying that, you know, maybe, maybe he'd be, he'd be behind it. You know, he it, said, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, but he likes to ignore that. But it happened. Yeah, but right? there's many other accounts where he said, I'm not for the war in Iraq. Right, later, in, in later. 04. That's why he pointed to 04. But in 03, when we went into Iraq, he was for it. Yeah, but the monumental journalist Howard Stern in saying, I guess so, I wouldn't count that as Mock as him if you like, but he got it. He, he got, got it. it. I wouldn't call that committing troops to a foreign war. Okay, go ahead. I, I think he was for the war. And I think, you know, the reason he's against it now, obviously, was because it differentiated him from the rest of the Republican candidates. And that's where it is with Donald Trump. Every time he does an interview, I never know what he's going to say. Mm -hmm. And so when it became politically convenient, for Donald Trump to be against the Iraq war. He was against the Iraq war, but make no mistake, he was for it in the beginning. What about Hillary? Because she, she's standing there in front of a group of vets like you guys who served for our country, served our country in Iraq honorably, many of whom lost soldiers, lost comrades, lost buddies, and watch what she said. How do you think these people feel when the person running to be their commander in chief says her vote to go to war in Iraq was a mistake? Look. I think that the decision to go to war in Iraq was a mistake. And I have said that my voting to give President Bush that authority was, from my perspective, my mistake. I also believe that it is imperative that we learn from the mistakes like after action reports are supposed to do. And so we must learn what led us down that path so that it never happens again. Dana Perino. Well, I think there's a little bit of selective memory going on. Um, Donald Trump wasn't in a position that Hillary Clinton was in 2003, uh, in, in the lead up, even in two, after 2001 and 2002. He wasn't in the United States Senate. He wasn't on the Armed Services Committee. She was. Mm -hmm. So she was privy to the information. So if he's on Howard Stern's show and he says, I guess so, I mean, that's pretty much where the rest of the country was as well. I mean, actually, people were a little bit more gung-ho. I don't think it's fair to actually hold him to that account, him saying that he was and he wasn't people can hold him into account for that. But with her, I've never understood why she disavowed that vote because she used her judgment based on the information that she had at the time that was, and she was not alone. I think that she got pushed into that politically from her far left. And if you notice one of the questions tonight from uh, somebody who self-identified as a progressive, that they're worried about her being too hawkish. They're worried that she would actually take too much action. Mm -hmm. But then she goes ahead and she takes something off the table. She says, as president, as commander in chief, I would not send any ground troops in. Well, how can you say that? Mm -hmm. You don't know. And she knows that she doesn't know that. But she, if she becomes she commander said, in chief, she might she, change and her she mind. She said no ground troops in Iraq. That's it. No, but we have ground troops. Yeah. In Iraq. And more are going. Look, I have to ask you, Carl. I mean, seriously, you guys serve there. The rest of us right. are just pundits. We just right. sit here, right, and, and news anchors. You serve there. What is it? What is it like to hear her that, say that? That battle changes day to day, month to month, year to year. You, there's no way you can commit a plan now. And look, you can hit Donald Trump for not having a plan all you want. But the fact of the matter is, if he's elected, that plan is going to have to change by November. Hillary Clinton has never ha been on the right side of a foreign conflict her entire time in office. I mean, everything she does, her ju judgment is wrong. It always ends up wrong. It always ends up getting people killed, and it always ends up hurting America. So I'd rather have Donald Trump, who's actually going to sit there and say, "Generals, give me a plan in 30 days. Let's execute it. Go." Go ahead. The reason her vote doesn't bother me is, is because I, I was in Iraq in 2003 with, with the 1st Armored Division, and I supported the war. And I supported it because I believed the leaders of my country that, that we were going to find weapons of mass destruction. It's, it's something that's hard for me still. I, I regret that opinion every day of my life. Um, and it's one of the reasons that I opposed intervention in Libya, and, and so did vote vets. I, I think Dana's right in regards to the politics of it. Obama was very much running against her in 2008 to be against uh, of the Iraq war and she had voted for it and, and then you know she turns around and supports Libya so she clearly is playing a little bit of politics on her positions here uh, and the concern that I have still is when she had another decision on Libya she decided to intervene there and that has not worked out well for this country. No, and it, what about what about Trump saying all this time he's he's got a plan to defeat ISIS he's gonna we're gonna get more of ISIS but he's got a plan to defeat ISIS and he just needs 30 days with the generals. In 30 days, first 30 days of his presidency, he's going to get a plan from the generals. And then he says um, they're going to give him his plan. Right. All this time he's got a secret plan. Yep. Then we say, what is it? Then right. he finally gives us the big reveal, which is 
I'm going to ask the generals. Right. Okay. Then he gets to, actually, I'm going to fire the generals because I, no, I they lose so that. much. Right. They've been losing for a long time. Yeah. Carl, really? He had a goal, not a plan. He had a goal. Uh, I think ha having these uh, top secret briefings and having the, the more experience in the political specter, he is getting to know that there is substantially more to this policy than just you know reading a book or watching CNN. There is uh, a necessary, uh, there, there's a need for him to listen to the generals, listen to the people who've been on the ground. He just said they're going to be fired. Well, he said the generals have been reduced to rubble and they've been losing for a long time. Well, the good generals, That's what the, he said. The good generals have been fired. I mean, Obama got rid of a lot of the generals that were willing to push back on him, and he just kept a bunch of crappy ones, to be honest, that are un So the yeah, remaining that, 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 generals are crappy. Not all of them, but many. Let's, let's, let's walk that back. <laughs> nope. let's, let's walk well, that back. I, I'll, I'll double down on John, that. Wait, yeah, I, I, I just ahead, think John. like General McChrystal was fired, and General McChrystal's an interventionist. He's, you know, he's very much into the Petraeus, you know, counterinsurgency policy, which is let's not insult Islam and Muslims. I mean, he's completely inconsistent with where Donald Trump would be. He, so if you're saying he, Obama fired good generals, this general that, that was fired by the president certainly wouldn't be someone, I think, who is with Donald Trump. General I will also tell you that this 30-day plan to joke. The, the problem with ISIS is not necessarily just a military problem. It's, it's much more vast than that. And, and to be honest, the administration's actually doing, you know, a better job than they're probably getting credit for right now inside Iraq. It was one of the last advisors out. We are seeing the Iraqi army conduct offensive combat operations for the first time. And the question is, who's going to own this when we're done? And if we go in and use U.S. kinetic force and large amounts of ground troops, then we're back to where we were in 2004. We own a lot of territory. Okay, stand by, because we have much more with you guys and with Dana and a few other guests, because in moments we're going to get to the explosive questions on Iran with Sergeant Robert Bartlett, an Iraq war veteran who was wounded by an Iranian-made IED, and Larry Korb, former assistant.